Hello guys, once again it's Matt and today we have another video. Thank you all the members, all the patrons. Make sure to subscribe and let's get into it. Very, very quick. So yeah, improved the heat signatures for jet engines. So here they're actually explaining what were the changes that they did with the missiles. Uh, if you know, I am going to post more videos on it, but yesterday I posted a lot of videos on it. They actually changed it a lot of... I mean, it's a minor change, but it affects basically all IR missiles in the game. They are basically all more, a little bit more sensitive right now uh, to heat signature. Uh, so they will tend to go to flares a little bit more, but also they detect targets a little bit better as well. So it's a win-lose kind of situation depending on the situation. If the target knows that you're there, it's a lose situation. If the target doesn't know that you're there, it's a win situation. So yeah. But basically here, they kind of uh, unveil, as they say here, the details of the recent improvements of, in the mechanics of acquiring thermal signatures of jet engines by missile seekers. So, yeah. So they kind of just added a little bit more code into the game, uh, which basically expand the way that everything is discriminated in the codes, right? So basically what they mean on all of these is that now, not only the aircraft itself has a heat signature, but the the plume of heat uh, that is behind the aircraft actually has one as well. Uh, so that actually helps uh, with detection. Uh, it is a little bit more realistic, okay, guys? It is a little bit more realistic. Uh, so even when you are in a head-on, for example, and the guy just puts his afterburner on, uh, the, the, the amount of heat that it's creating on the image uh, that the missile is detecting behind the aircraft, it is also helping the missile detect the target, um, you know. Uh, when not uh, in after burning, obviously the only way that the missile will detect uh, the target is by um, uh, basically the, the, the heating created by the fuselage in basically a, a attrition to the air, right? So that was made a little bit more, you know, uh, a little bit more sensitive. So they basically just made everything more sensitive, uh, or, the, or all the missile seekers and all of that, together with adding these uh, after afterburner plume into a separated thermal signature uh, in the game, right? So basically that's it. Uh, it is more realistic. It makes the heat... Um, a little bit more realistic and also countermeasures a little bit more strong but uh, we might see some interesting missiles coming up uh, fairly soon anyway that will try to avoid that uh, we have some some things here for example in the A9L for example um, some some like uh, graphics right uh, you can see that it depends on the target um, uh, basically aspect of it and if it's an afterburner or in military power, you can detect from a very, very far range. So, for example, here, here is in uh, thousands of feet. Uh, so, for example, in a head-on pass here, or I think it's the missile on a... I don't understand exactly that is aerodynamic limit. So, if the target... Let me, let me think about this a little bit. So yeah, basically it is in thousands of feet the range on the seeker together with the aerodynamic limit. So here we have some altitudes and speeds of target and missile launch speed and, and 5G target, whatever, right? Uh, but uh, yeah, as you see here, the military power obviously produces a lot more, a lot less heat. So we can detect it by a lot less range. So for example, uh, 16,000 feet would be basically let me think about it um five kilometers kind of and um in a rear aspect kind of situation and this would be kind of like this is 24 32 i mean this is probably around 20 so 28 probably 28 um it would be around nine kilometers of range so increases a lot the detection here right Another thing is this one, actually a very interesting one, the R24, I think it is, R24T, target acquisition limits for the R24T for targets of various engine modes. So um, here we have, depending on speed, on type of aircraft, 
Uh, so as you see here, uh, max, right? Uh, the, the speed, the altitude, as you see here. And I don't remember exactly what this is. Uh, this is basically the, um, the degrees that the target is. So uh, I don't exactly understand if the target is actually like uh, stationary or not. Let me check with the translation here. It's basically the in degrees, uh, the angle of the target. So I think if it's zero angles, I think it is uh, basically a head-on pass of an F-15, for example, at 5,000 meters at max 0.5. It is basically three kilometers. If the target is coming at you at 5,000 meters at Mach 1.3, the range on the R24T is nine kilometers. Um, at, for example, 11,000, no, this is too fast. I mean, yeah, it could be, right? Oh my God, that's that's really large. But yeah, if the target is in 180, in a rear aspect kind of situation, uh, you can see here at 5,000, at, well, I don't know, at 5,000, but at Mach 1.3, it's 38 kilometers, the range. Uh, so as you see here, the more it goes for a head on pass, uh, the less range he has. So yeah, he, here is the head-on, here is the rear aspect. F-16, same kind of situation over here. Very funny that he has a very short range when the target is actually um, coming towards you. But as you see over here, you can clearly see that the if the target is actually flying really fast. Uh, so for example, at 20,000 meter, 20, meters at Mach 3, for example, the range on the, the seeker of the R24 is 49 kilometers. Think about what is happening here. So why do, do you have less range when the, the target is flying actually slower? It is due to the fuselage being with less heat. The attrition on the heat, the drag, everything like that, the air is producing a lot less heat um, if the target is flying higher or higher speed. Uh, it produces a lot more heat, so it's easier to detect. With such a weird thing as the SR-71 having 49 kilometers of detection with the R-24T um, because of that. So, yeah, of course, flying that high as well helps a lot. Uh, differentiating between the, air, the, the cold air and the aircraft, it also helps the missile a little bit. But as you see here, we can clearly see some of this stuff. Um, I wish they actually posted everything like this. Uh, I mean, this is such a cool, like, um, graphic here. Uh, so, not graphic, like a list or something. So, I really, really wish that we had that for the R60M, for example, or the uh, R27, especially, because these are very cool to actually see. I mean, look at the range on these, man, Mach 2.35. The more speed you have, the more after burning you have, um, the better the range is. I even think that, let me just check over here. Yeah, basically here uh, it is uh, the, um, the the mode of work, Raboti here, uh, as you see, uh, of the engine. So I don't know exactly, maximum, uh, maximum. I think this is afterburner, I think. Uh, and depending on the situation here will be afterburner or military power. I think this is just military power, but still, I think, I don't know. Um, still, very, very cool to see this and just a very cool addition. I know it feels like it's a nerf and stuff, but it just makes the game a little bit more realistic. Okay, guys. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and I see you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. See you.